There's an old adage that when someone tells you who they are, you should actually believe them. And I think for the most part, the MCU, Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, everyone has been telling us what the MCU is now. Now that we've gotten through phase four, we're into phase five, and it's much the same. It's a girl power faux superhero universe for, for reasons unknown, at least to this man right here. I watched the Marvel's trailer. And phase five is not getting any better. In fact, it seems to have gotten worse. And these aren't predictions. These are spoilers. This is another bomb and another black eye in the making for Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige. What an absolute joke. Marvel Studios released their first trailer for the upcoming The Marvel's film. The trailer introduces an odd mechanic that sees Brie Larson's Captain Marvel, Tiana Paris's Captain Monica Rambeau, and Iman Vellani's Miss Marvel swapping physical locations with each other when they activate their abilities after Rambo enters a wormhole. And that is pretty much what the entire trailer is. It's really oh so funny hijinks of them being in positions and then someone activating their powers and it being really hilarious when they switch powers. They're like, oh no, I was supposed to be fighting somebody. I swapped again. Dad nab it. And I don't know, I guess Freaky Friday has a place in the world and a Freaky Friday remake of a superhero movie maybe wasn't the worst idea in the world, but the MCU trying to do it under Kevin Feige probably is. And I feel so bad for Samuel L. Jackson. Obviously, the man has been a part of the MCU pretty much from day one. He's been one of the connective threads that's basically kept the entire franchise together. And he could have never predicted it would get to this. He's the very first face you see in the trailer. And, you know, you can almost see that he's embarrassed himself for having to be associated with it anymore. I think the writing's on the wall at this point, and even Samuel L. Jackson, who is absolutely well-known in Hollywood as a man that's willing to take any paycheck anytime, so I guess he asked for it, you know? Maybe he stuck around a little bit too long, but the real problem with this is, is the characters. I've heard a lot of people saying that this Kamala Khan, Imam Vellani, a character is the standout of the, of the trailer, and it's the most embarrassing part of it. I thought that Tom Holland's Spider-Man character was way too much of a fanboy of Iron Man to where he basically became Iron Lad. But they are doing Kamala Khan no favors in this trailer whatsoever. She is just a fangirl. She's so excited that she gets to be on a mission with Carol Danvers. And she's so excited to meet Photon. And she wants to introduce him to her family. And, and the hijinks are coming rapidly. And there's a, a cat that can eat a bunch of people. And, and oh my goodness, and all this stuff is happening, and you just feel bad for the character. Kamala Khan once had promise within comic books. They destroyed it there in pretty short order, and they've absolutely done it a million times worse somehow in the MCU. One of the things that the MCU had been able to do in the past, at least with a character like Kate Bishop, who's a very bad version of Hawkeye within the comic book universe, is they kind of salvaged the character at least within the Hawkeye show. I thought they did a very good job recontextualizing who Kate Bishop was in the MCU and really made the character much more bearable, which she is absolutely unbearable in the comic books themselves. But they've gone out of their way to embarrass Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, to being just a fangirl. She's got an entire room dedicated to Captain Marvel. She's got posters and she's imagined that they could go on adventures together and they were going to be best friends and... I don't know, this is just, this is a movie that's made for 12-year-old girls. And I don't think that having an MCU movie dedicated to 12-year-old girls is really all that bad of a thing. Don't get mad when boys or men go, you know what, that movie's probably not for me. But you watch the trailer and it's clear that everything happening is designed for a preteen girl audience. And it's blaring Beastie Boys the entire time. Do 10-year-old girls like Beastie Boys? Like, why do they even have that? Shouldn't they have something that girls actually want to hear to accentuate the trailer itself that's designed specifically for them? Like, can't we have Avril Lavigne? She's probably not cool anymore. Maybe, like, my girl T-Swift or something like that? How about actually having a soundtrack that makes sense for the audience that you're trying to design the movie for and stop confusing the hell out of everybody and what you want the actual audience to be? And I will give it this. At least Carol Danvers has a personality now. That was definitely one of the downfalls of the first Captain Marvel movie besides Carol Davers not really being a character with a lot of meat on the bones, especially when it comes to her Captain Marvel phase. But now she's a wine ant and not like the wine ant that shows up and has inappropriate conversations with their niece and maybe tries to take her to a bar when she's not supposed to. This is a wine ant that clearly doesn't like children. Ha ha. Wow. Who would have thought Carol Davers doesn't like kids? 
And that'll be the, the big joke and payoff for the entire movie because at the end, she's just going to fall in love with that little fangirl Kamala God. But at least she has a personality. Maybe that's a step up for the character. As far as Monica Rambeau, I don't know why she's even in the movie. Based on what we got from the trailer yesterday, there's not a whole lot to the character. Is she a blank slate or is she just there to be a plot device or something like that? Obviously, with some superheroes with their power sets, they are used as plot devices. And it doesn't appear that they're giving Monica Rambeau very much to do within the movie itself. She's in there because they needed a third wheel, apparently, with the Marvels itself. Uh, not a lot of interesting stuff going on. There is a gender swap version, not of Ronan and the Accuser, but another Accuser from back in the day. Uh, that'll be really exciting for nobody <laughs> I just don't know what's supposed to draw people into this movie. The MCU have focused in on an audience so small that like this is designed to fail. And they'll probably laud the success as it fails, acting like they did something good here, rather than diminish the entire state of the MCU piece by fucking piece, which is what you know Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios are doing here. I know Kevin Feige wanted to make some changes. He wanted to slow down the releases so they could fix up some of the VFX. That is not going to happen here. You can see this movie was so far gone. It was like in Batgirl territory. But instead of doing the sensible thing like David Zaslav and just scrapping it and saying, you know what, let's take some tax breaks. Rather than solely our reputation as a production company, they've actually just decided to release it with really bad jokes, cringy humor that everyone has hated pretty much for the entirety of Phase 4, and it's absolutely continuing into Phase 5. We do have a synopsis that was released about the movie as well. In Marvel Studios, the Marvels, Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, has reclaimed her identity from the tyrannical Kree and taken revenge on the Supreme Intelligence. But unintended consequences see Carol shouldering the burden of a destabilized universe when her duties send her to an anomalous wormhole linked to a Kree revolutionary. Her powers become entangled with that of Jersey super fade Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Miss Marvel, and Carol's estranged niece, now saber astronaut Monica Rambeau, Together, this unlikely trio must team up and learn to work in concert to save the universe as the Marvels. But they're not a team. At least that's what the adults told the kid in the trailer. I thought it was supposed to be funny, I guess. And uh, I, I don't know. I thought Sword replaced Shield, but apparently it's Saber and uh, <laughs> whatever. If this movie has any long-term impact on the future of the MCU, it's a terrible mistake. It's going to die a very short-term death. Some idiots will go to the movie theater on opening weekend because they still think the MCU's got it. They'll be very disappointed. They'll go home, tell everybody how bad the movie was, and then no one will show up again in week two. And everyone will be like, see, it's not dead on the first weekend. And then the second weekend, they're like, oh, they're going to lose money again, aren't they? Oh, man. That's not good news for the MCU as everybody kind of comes to grips, comes to terms with one of the entertainment juggernauts, something that was absolutely bulletproof for about seven or eight years, just flops around on the ground and dies. It's, this trailer was a wet fart. I genuinely believe that most people who enjoy the MCU and consider themselves fans but are wary of it now are going to see this, and they're going to see right through it, and they're going to know that it's more of the same. This thing is going to bomb so hard it's not even funny. It might not even have that big opening weekend because the MCU itself is tarnished, and we've seen how disappointed people are getting every time they go to the movie theater. And this is next up on the slate. And outside of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the final chapter of that, I just don't think there's anything out there on the horizons that's going to change anyone's mind. And there's a good chance that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 doesn't do that because the second would suck too. So we shall see what happens. This thing is absolutely going to die. Kevin Feige should have worked harder to save this, or he should have just shelved it or maybe made it a Disney Plus movie. That's where this movie should have been. They never should have believed that they could actually release this into movie theaters and not tarnish the reputation, which probably can't take any more damage at this point. Kevin Feige was going to make some changes. It's clear he was never going to be able to save this film. I called it a couple of bucks back. If you haven't seen this, I bombed the shit out of Kevin Feige because he really deserves it. If you haven't seen the video yet, there's also a link in the video description.